Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, you know Eve two collaboration culture from the point of view of Eve two. Uh, what does collaboration mean? It just means simply working uh, together. So I'm going to try and kind of celebrate the various uh, successes that we've had in working together and try and encourage even more collaboration. Uh, because I think collaboration is one of the most kind of important and precious things that we have in this ecosystem. The ecosystem is designed for collaboration. It puts collaboration as a, as a first-class citizen, uh, and I think we should embrace that more. Um, so I'm going to talk uh, in first about internal collaboration, and by that I mean collaboration which is internal to the Ethereum ecosystem, and I guess that shouldn't be too surprising that there is collaboration there because we've been collaborating on Ethereum since the very beginning, so this is just an extension um, of, of our, our culture. I, the second part might be a bit more surprising, and this is about uh, collaboration between blockchains. So we've seen this recent explosion of new ideas, of very high quality teams, and how can we make the most of that in win-win you know, collaborations? Okay, first part, collaboration within Ethereum for Ethereum 2.0. So I guess um, Ethereum actually started at the very early days. Um, Vitalik already in January 2014 and in the rest of 2014 was already thinking about um, scalability and proof of stake even before uh, DEF CON Zero, even before Ethereum were, were, was launched. And I guess this culture of being open and transparent kind of is part uh, of what we do at the Ethereum Foundation. Um, and we've had uh, contributions from other, other early founders in, um, for EVE 2. We've had Ga Gavin come in, uh, we, we've, had, we've had Vlad, um, and this eventually led to the, the, the Morph paper, which was the, the, you know, the first attempt to write some sort of spec uh, for Serenity for EVE 2. Um, 2016 and maybe early 2017 was a bit of a, a down year in terms of uh, Eve 2 research, but in mid 2017 we had Eve research come in, and in addition to transparency and open sea uh, and being open, we had interactivity. So we had the possibility for researchers to to comment on on our research, but also to submit their own ideas. And this kind of led to Eve research, uh, which is a forum online, to become um, a very active place uh, within the blockchain space. And in 2018, a lot of the core ideas of Eve 2 were either born or solidified um, during that time uh, on, on Eve research. And you know, as, as a continuation of research, we have specking and implementation. And here as well, we've tried to be as open uh, from day one, partly to um, enable early teams to, to come in. Um, and you know, this, this may have been a little bit chaotic for the early implementers because we keep changing platform um, every other month and we um, change the spec quite a lot. But I think it all turned out pretty well because uh, this is a recent picture of uh, the interrupt lock-in and we have nine different implementer teams from all over the world coming in. So, you know, the, the costs of being open, you know, in terms of confusion and chaos um, are definitely outweighed by, um, by the advantages. Another thing that we've done to try and encourage uh, collaboration in Eve 2 is at the legal level. So, there's all sorts of tools, legal tools, that um, the creators of a blockchain project can use to maintain some sort of ownership over what they've created. And you know, as part of the philosophy of you know, um, minimization and simplicity and making Ethereum a real common good, the Ethereum Foundation has restrained from using those tools and tried to take an you know, in, in extreme um, de decoupling approach. So for licensing, for example, all the work that we do is open by default. Um, the patents, we have no patents. Um, and if we did have patents, it would be you know, exclusively for defensive reasons. Uh, NDAs, only for, the, the, you know, for data protection uh, within, within the foundation, you know, not to disclose things like salaries. Um, and trademarks, we've, uh, we only have them for defensive purposes and we've never enforced them. 
And I kind of want to contrast that with um, stories inspired from the, 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 the blockchain space. So there's, the, the, uh, there's four blockchain projects in my mind that have taken you know, the extreme opposite um, strategy for, for, for these things. So for example, there's a, a chain that uh, has licensing which is exclusive to their chain. So if you want to use their technology and their code, you can't. It has to be for this one chain. There's another project which has 30 patents in their white paper. Um, there's yet another project that every employee is NDA'd. And if you ask them, what have you been working on for the last two, three years? They say, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not, I can't tell you. Uh, and then there's another blockchain project where um, the, the, the trademark for the, the blockchain is, is owned by a, a private entity as opposed to the public foundation. And you know, th this opposite strategy, even though it might give you uh, control, ultimately I think it's shooting yourself in the foot. Um, because you know, there's, there's, if you were to enforce these tools, they would be uh, enforced uh, centrally, um, and it, it kind of goes against the grain of, of, of our culture. Um, so here for the Ethereum Foundation, we're, we're just less likely to, to use legal tools. We've never sued anyone. Uh, and I think we're, we're quite un, un, unlikely to, to, to sue people. Um, and so just to summarize uh, this, this legal um, strategy, we make, we, we make the code, the, the ideas, the people, the brand, it's all, it's, it's everyone's, it's a common good. It, it's not our code. And um, I guess this strategy has worked out pretty well for trademarks. So we've, the Ethereum Foundation has actually been unable to get trademarks uh, recently uh, in Singapore and Korea, they were like, the patent office was like, hey, no, uh, Ethereum is a, is a common good, it's a blockchain, it's a cryptocurrency, you can't trademark it. And this is brilliant. We've reached a point where uh, we can't even trademark uh, the, 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 the brand that we've created. Um, one of the things that um, we're, you know, I guess also um, good at is trying to, to parallelize, to try and have different teams work on, on, on different places at the same time. So we have prototyping teams that work on phase zero, phase one, and phase two all in parallel. We have Quilt, Wasm, Trinity. And we also have all sorts of different teams working in parallel for quality assurance. So we have um, two teams working on formal ver verification on different parts of the EVE2 spec. We have security audits, cryptographic audits. We have fuzzing. We have bug bounties. Um, and actually, here's a, a list of five uh, currently active bug bounties uh, that you're welcome to, to try and tackle. Uh, and the first one, which is the um, um, bounties for the phase zero consensus, today we're, we're, we're doubling them. So all of these bounties um, should be available on, on challenges. Uh, Ethereum, aha, this is the slide, okay. <laughs> Why did no one tell me? <laughs> okay, so um, th these bounties should all be um, kind of combined uh, on a single web page, uh, challenges.ethereum.org. Uh, uh, and bounties is also uh, you know, a, a great way to extend the collaboration from a, a short-term stint to a more long-term collaboration. So here's an example where um, you know, I submitted a 10 ETH bounty on, on, uh, on Twitter to uh, write the, the phase zero spec uh, in a, a thousand lines of Go code. A few days later, this bounty was claimed. And then a few days later, the guy, Proto, who actually uh, claimed the bounty was, was hired full time. And you know, also in, in the context of um, you know, delegating, but also minimizing the, the, uh, the, the role of the foundation is, is, is grants. So we've given uh, over $40 million in grants. We have a dedicated grants team of eight people. Uh, and in, in addition to a quarterly uh, grant program, we have uh, special grants, you know, sometimes going up to uh, $5 million grants. 
Uh, and again, just to give you like a, 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 an example of how willing we are to, to collaborate, um, I gave a, a talk recently uh, in Tel Aviv on uh, E3 quantum security. There was a, 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 a quantum post-quantum signature expert in the room. He came to me, he said, I'm interested in working on this problem that you just presented. Um, a few days later, we had a call, and then a few days later after that, we had a grant. So if you have, if there's a good match, we can really move forward uh, fast on collaboration. Okay, so this is, this was internal collaboration, I guess, not too surprising, still extremely dynamic. You know, I don't think there's many blockchain projects out there that have managed to, uh, for example, have nine different implementer teams uh, for, for the, the one uh, protocol. But uh, I guess one thing that I'm, uh, you know, very excited about is tr cross-chain collaboration. And one thing to note is that um, cross-chain collaboration is happening uh, de facto. So these are ideas that we have essentially uh, borrowed, inspired ourselves from other blockchain projects that are shipping in phase zero. Um, so we have BLS, uh, VRFs using signatures, VDFs, tree hashing. Um, these are all things that other blockchain projects have f had thought of before us, and we were able to, to reuse the, their work. Um, and there's also all sorts of uh, new ideas that are, that are more recent, that are being experimented with, that we are very excited about. Um, key evolving signatures, snark-based like clients, you know, um, even the, the Move VM from, from Libra. All of these things we're keeping a keen eye on uh, and will uh, gladly incorporate if these experiments turn out well. Um, one, one piece of great news is that a lot of these uh, blockchain projects have uh, foundations. So for example, Cosmos has the Interchain Foundation, Polkadot, Web3 Foundation, Filecoin, Protocol Labs, et cetera, et cetera. And these foundations, as you can tell from their names, they have a, a vision, a mission, which extends way beyond their own blockchain. So for example, Interchain, it, you know, evokes uh, you know, an idea of many blockchains talking to each other. Web3 you know, evokes the idea that you have more components than just a blockchain, you have a whole ecosystem. Same for protocol, et cetera. And these foundations have a lot in common. We, we share um, um, a desire for interoperability, for standardization, for common goods. Um, and another kind of point that we have in common is we, we, have, we have money that we'd like to, to, um, to invest uh, in, in, the, in the broader um, ecosystem. Um, so, you know, just to, to drill into one of these foundations um, where I think there's, there's very good alignment is, is Protocol Labs. So Protocol Labs, at the legal layer, they have this uh, really nice open pledge where they say that the code that they're shipping is, you know, dual license and to, under two extremely uh, permissive licenses. And any patents that they have, they have this patent non-aggression uh, pledge. Um, they're also trying very hard to build um, modular components that can be reused. And the more modularity that you have, I think, uh, the, the better in terms of, of reuse. And there's one specific uh, module that the EF2 uh, is looking to, to reuse, and that's libp 2 p um, And it's not just something that we're looking to use, it's also something, uh, for example, that um, Cosmos is looking to use, Polkadot is uh, looking to use, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's becoming a, a standard, which is fantastic. Uh, and they're also you know, very generous in terms of funding common goods, um, and you know, they're very proactive in terms of finding uh, places where not only can they benefit themselves, but they can benefit the whole ecosystem. So in terms of uh, standards, which is one of um, the, 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 the goals if we want to try and be really good at working together, um, I think we're starting to see the emergence of a blockchain standard, uh, kind of a stack. Um, so it, started, it starts with SHA-256 at the, at, the um, at the bottom layer. The vast majority of existing and future blockchain projects are built on SHA-256. Uh, and that prevents a lot of headaches um, if we all use the same thing. 
Um, lib P2P, I think, has a really good shot at becoming you know, the standardized networking peer-to-peer uh, -peer layer uh, for the, the various blockchain projects. We have BLS, and maybe even more specifically, BLS 12.381 as part of that stack. Wasm, uh, and I think uh, at, at one of the final layers, um, we're going to have universal snarks. So this is a, a very recent development, but it's very exciting. It's the idea that um, you can have a snark proving system which works for everyone, which is circuit agnostic, uh, and in particular in the trusted setup. Um, like Z Z Zcash, for example, is, uh, is, a, is a, they, they pioneered the use of of, of, Zeke, uh, of snarks within a, a blockchain setup, but they had this uh, significant friction of having to do a trusted setup uh, for their specific application. But now we have new technologies to try and avoid this barrier to entry, um, and that's very exciting. And one of the amazing things is that these pieces of technology, are the, the, the people who have actually built them are either directly from the blockchain space or have been subsumed and incorporated into the blockchain space. So, for example, Plonk, the author, the authors are from Filecoin and Aztec. Marlin, one of the authors is from Ethereum. Wasm, the founder of Ethereum, has gone to Definity. BLS12381, literally Zcash came up with this curve, Sean Bowie. And then the L, um, Ben Lin, is at, is at uh, Definity. And um, same with the P2P. Um, I guess the only exception is, uh, is SHA-256. Uh, that came from the NSA, but at least the, the logo kind of looks like a, that of a coin. <laughs> um, you know, interoperability as well is, is, uh, is a great way to, to collaborate. So we have these, these two uh, projects, Cosmos and, and Polkadot, you know, that, that's part of the whole vision um, to, to, to be interoperable with, um, with other blockchains. And so you know, they, they've made an effort to take, take modules that are reusable and, 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 and um, share them to the community. So we have IBC from Cosmos, we have Substrate, um, and another interesting trend that we're seeing is uh, SNARK-based light clients. Because interoperability uh, between chains is, is a lot about uh, light clients, and we want them to be as cheap as possible. And we have Coda that's uh, working with the uh, fully recursive SNARKs, MNT4, MNT6, and then we have Celo, which is working with one level of recursion with the, the, the Zexi curves. All super interesting stuff. And one of the successes, I think, um, of blockchain collaboration has been with the academics. So we have this one group at Stanford, which is basically four people looking into uh, blockchain-specific stuff, and they've, they've invented, well, you know, they've, they've pushed forward you know, a very significant chunk of the crypto which is used today by blockchains. And this is the stuff um, that, have, that they, they have influenced us within um, Ethereum. But there's all sorts of other pieces of crypto that, it, that, that is being used within the, the wider blockchain space. And I guess um, a large part of this, um, this influence um, probably came from the fact that um, the there was a $30 million of funding to um, the, the, the Stanford Center for Blockchain Research, which happened uh, in 2018. And so, and here, you know, we've seen collaboration at the funding level. There's four different blockchain projects um, and others that, that have uh, funded this, and it's been a huge, huge success. And the Stanford uh, Center for Blockchain Research, in addition to doing all this research, they're doing all sorts of other programs that are providing value to the ecosystem. So I mentioned the, these um, universal snarks, uh, and so the snark ceremonies is one thing that uh, I think we can collaborate because it's a shared piece of technology. And here, actually, in the participation, diversity is key. So we want to try and uh, re reduce trust in the system, and the more diverse the participants, the better. So that's another area for collaboration. And another kind of interesting trend is, is hardware. How can we use hardware to our benefit? And the competition model, which worked really well for proof of work, is also, uh, I believe, going to work extremely well for VDF and SNARK ASICs. I think at this point, we all want to see SNARK ASICs as, uh, as the, the next piece, of, uh, as, as one of the pieces of hardware coming up. Uh, so on that topic, 
um, in terms of hardware competitions, we just finished the VDF uh, competition, uh, which was uh, the, the first round, uh, <clears throat> which led to a 75% uh, speed up in performance. Uh, congratulations, uh, Eric Pearson, for that. And we're going to start the second round of the competition uh, in just a few days. And you know, the VDF Alliance, uh, here it's, it's an example of collaboration where we could not have done it alone. It's not just that we're, we would be wasting resources if we, if we tried the, the same thing at the same time. It's here, the, the, the project is so expensive that we need collaboration. And here I'm excited to announce that Tezos is the, the fourth uh, funding partner uh, to the Alliance, Cosmos, Ethereum, Filecoin, Tezos. I think that's a great team of, of founders. And you know, collaboration extends beyond the blockchain space. We have collaboration at the tooling level with AWS, Synopsys, Xilinx, and also with academics, uh, because there's some hard problems to be solved here. And you know, the, the space of collabor future collaborations is just, is just massive. Uh, and that's only a partial list. So really excited to be working with our blockchain projects. This is a unique opportunity. And I think we can only get to where we want to be um, you know, through collaboration. The, 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 the vision is so, so ambitious that we have to collaborate. It's not even a choice. Thank you.